Hello and welcome to this week's Catholic Herald podcast, where we discuss what's really happening in the Catholic Church. I'm Madeline Tehan, the Associate Editor, and today I'm joined by Joseph Pierce, who writes this week, These are troubling times. Europe is apparently on the verge of meltdown, unable to withstand the heat caused by the growing friction between the European Union and its member states there are fears that the melting pot might be melting. Such fears have been exacerbated by the rise of the new right, or what many would call the far right in Europe. Joseph, um, thank you for joining us today. Um, Can you begin by giving us the, the big picture here? Where has the far right gained prominence in Europe? And what are the what, what is the evidence that it is gaining serious prominence? Well, basically, in the last few years, since since 2014 particularly, so just the last couple of years, there's been a significant increase in the number of votes that, that parties on the uh, on the far right have been receiving throughout Europe. Um, you know, people might think perhaps of Eastern Europe, but what I find, and that is indeed uh, uh, very intriguing, that throughout uh, the old uh, communist world now that um, we see the rise of, of these uh, these new uh, right wing parties. Um, but uh, what, what I find very significant is in the very heart of Europe itself. I mean, the, if you like, the engine room of, of, of the European Union has always been France and Germany. Uh, and we, we see this meltdown of, uh, to, to which I refer not just in the, should we say, the eastern fringes of the European Union, but in the very heartland of it. Right. And is there any, is there any uh, country in particular, for example, that has a particular problem with the far right that springs to mind? Well, I mean, I, I, it's been much more uh, difficult to find one that doesn't, in the sense that, yeah. uh, that just about everywhere, all of the major countries in Europe, if, in fact, I would say that perhaps the one that where, where we may, may uh, ironically have the least problem might be our own country, the United Kingdom, um, uh, where the, uh, the, certainly the, 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 the far right, the, uh, uh, the pernicious far right, the racist right, is, is certainly doesn't seem to be a major force at the moment. Although, of course, we do have... Uh, the UK Independence Party, and we do have the Leave campaign uh, in the in the in the present, uh, obviously, um, referendum campaign. So, so uh, you know, it's not as if these issues that, that that are affecting the rest of Europe are not affecting the UK. But, but really, throughout the rest of the European Union, there seems to be a common thread running through just about every member nation um, mm. th- uh, of this, uh, if you like, uneasiness at, at the, should we say, the uh, the heavy handedness of. Uh, of Brussels, especially in 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 regard to the the mi- the migrant problem uh, from from the Middle East and Pakistan, uh, the, these these wandering uh, groups of people that obviously uh, are trying to enter Europe, and the response of the European public to this has, been, I suppose, ultimately been somewhat predictable. And you say that the situation in in Europe, the turbulent situation, gives you a sense of of deja vu i wondered if you could elaborate for the benefit of our readers um why this is the case who who don't know your personal story uh, yes indeed i mean for those that don't know my own my own past back uh, when i was a young man a teenager and then in my early 20s back in the 1970s and 1980s i was a leading member of the national front which uh, for, for for your younger listeners was the precursor of the bnp the british national party I was uh, on its governing body and was chairman of its youth movement, the Young National Front, and uh, was uh, sentenced to prison twice for publishing material likely to incite racial hatred for editing a magazine called Bulldog, which was the newspaper of the Young National Front. So yes, as a young man, I was very heavily involved in in the rise of of, uh, what might be called the radical right. Um, And so in that sense, of course, I've watched uh, developments in Europe with... uh, with uh, a particular interest, and certainly in some senses, at least, uh, a sense of deja vu. Can you tell us what appealed to you about the far right? Well, I mean, I, I, I was I was raised uh, with a rather, by my, largely by my father, as a with a rather nostalgic view of the British Empire, that the British Empire was a beneficent force in the world, and that it spread uh, what might be called the Pax Britannica, you know, the Britain's peace. Uh, to which we say, say less developed 
uh, people. So it took me a long while, and in my book, uh, Race with the Devil, my journey from racial hatred to rational love, I, I chart my journey away from this sort of uh, nostalgic uh, idealizing of the British Empire t towards... Uh, uh, and away from from uh, the bitterness and, and bigotry of racism, which was, if you like, a, a byproduct of that, towards an embrace of uh, of Catholicism and uh, its philosophy of realism, and and, and especially uh, replacing my my irrational racial hatred with a rational love, which we find in Christ. So, so what exactly was it, um, and when was it, and how was it that you came to realise that? The, the the far right, the, the National Front, did not give you, provide you with what you were looking for, what you were searching for? Well, I think, first of all, at, at the heart of it was a false, a false god, or perhaps more than one false god. Pagans tend to... Uh, to uh, to be, to be polytheistic, you know, I I had I had uh, an, uh, idolized the the notion of, of Britain, uh, what it was to be British. Uh, I also um, uh, made that synonymous with with being white. So I also idolized uh, myself in racial terms and and other people in racial terms, and of course then anathematized others uh, because they were not of uh, of my race. And of course I, I came to realize that one of the most pernicious things any of us can do to our brothers and sisters is to hate someone for something for which they're not culpable. Now, we may, we may hate people for things they've done to us, you know, if, they, if, they, if they've been violent to us or abused us in some way. I can understand why we would respond when, when someone is culpable. But I think one of the pernicious things about racism is the hatred of people for, for, things, uh, for something for which they're not culpable, the colour of their skin. Of course, no one has, has a, a choice in that. It's the way we're born. So I think I came to realise that at, at root, there was something pernicious, uh, mean-spirited, uh, and ultimately irrational in, in, in racism as a creed. Because that's the thing, you're obviously a um, highly intelligent individual, so it seems staggering to me that you bought into the idea that you could judge someone and hate someone on the basis of the colour of their skin. Yeah, I think I think it, you know it, it does get complex and convoluted. I was first of all I was young, of course, and therefore naive. Uh, I was fifteen when I became involved in uh, in extremist politics. Uh, but I was in it uh, until, until my mid twenties for a period of ten years. But of course, you know what what tends to happen is you see multiracialism as that which is going to destroy everything which you idolise your, mm. your notion of, of race and nation. Uh, and therefore, it's very easy there where that friction builds up for you to uh, to uh, unleash your, your passions, your feelings in terms of resentment towards others. And of course, it's very easy to see the other if the other looks differently from you as an enemy. So what would you say to a Catholic in, in Poland, for example, um, who is attracted to uh, racist ideas or the far right? What would you say to them to convince them that as a Catholic, the two are not compatible in, and why the far right cannot provide them with the answers. Well, I think the challenge is to face very real problems. And there, 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 there's no doubt at all that the uh, over, overarching and overreaching uh, imperialism of the European Union is a problem that I think it's, it's, it's completely just for the individual nations of Europe to resist being coerced into into the loss of their sovereignty. And I also think that the uh, Islamization of, of, of Europe is clearly a problem. Uh, and in those countries where it, it hasn't become the, 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 uh, the problem that it is, for instance, in countries like France and, and, and in the United Kingdom, I think it's completely legitimate for those countries to not want to, not want to take that path with the with the multifarious problems that it uh, that it brings with it, the problem is that we must uh, do that without succumbing to hatred, uh, and particularly hatred for other people purely on the grounds of of, of the colour of their skin. And we need to remember, of course, you know, we're talking about uh, the threat of Islam. It's not a racial issue; it is a religious issue, um, and uh, it, it's a, it's a cultural issue, and it's a clash of civilizations. And the, and these are all issues which we are perfectly at liberty in 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 a, in a free society and in a democracy to to. Uh, express ourselves about, in ter in, uh, including with the parties that we vote for. But the challenge of Christians is to ensure that that uh, friction, 
that exists, those problems and the addressing of those problems does not turn into manifestations of racism or other manifestations of hatred against, against neighbor, uh, which is, of course, absolutely forbidden for, for any Christian. And if we're going to live in accordance with, with our Christian principles, not only we, must we not fall into that temptation ourselves, we have to do what we can to stop others from falling into that temptation. I have to say, Joseph, I'm I'm, I'm still fascinated um, by your your personal journey. I'm just wondering how how did you even come across Catholicism in the in the first place? Were you baptized Catholic, or how did that come about? Oh no, I was not baptized Catholic. In fact, I was very very anti-Catholic. In my in my book, I talk about my involvement with the loyalist paramilitary groups, the UVF and the UDA in Northern Ireland during the 1970s and 80s, and also about the fact that I was a member of the Orange Order, which is a virulently anti-Catholic secret society. Um, so I was very anti-Catholic. No, I came across Catholicism, I mean, basically, first of all, by being introduced to the, the works of G.K. Chesterton. And there's a chapter in my book called Surprised by Chesterton, uh, where, you know, I didn't agree, obviously, with Chesterton's Catholicism or his Christianity, but I couldn't help liking him. And I couldn't help liking many of the things he said, and I continued reading him. And through Chesterton, I came to uh, other writers such as Hilaire Belloc and uh, C.S. Lewis, and, and it was a path that, which at first, at least, was largely intellectual path. And I was conver absolutely convinced at the time that my conversion to Catholicism was entirely rational. And it's only with the wisdom of hindsight that I see actually there's a great deal of healing happening. In other words, divine grace was a, certainly a partner in the whole uh, in the whole pro process. But at the time, I didn't realise that. It's only looking back that I actually see that. Oh, that sounds absolutely fascinating. And um, for the benefit of our listeners, can you remind us of the title of your book again, Joseph? Yes, the uh, the full title of the book is Race with the Devil. My Journey from Racial Hatred to Rational Love, and it's published by St. Benedict Press. Well, if you'd also like to read Joseph's excellent article in this week's Catholic Herald, it's out now. It's priced at £2. Or why not subscribe? Visit catholicherald.co.uk for more information. Joseph Pierce, thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure.